What you see behind me is uh, Corlow's Fort, built in the 19th century, which is um, Victorian. Uh, it was built to combat um, the French ironclad fleet. They were a, a ship that was basically ironclad and steam powered. And um, they were a bit concerned about coming down the Thames Estuary, where we are, opposite here, uh, and getting past the defences and getting to London. This was commissioned by the Royal Commission of the Defence of the UK in 1860. Built in 1893, this is the sole surviving type of quick fire gun positioning left uh, on the Thames Estuary. In 1539, before this um, blockhouse was built, obviously, it was the uh, time of Henry VIII, and they had a fortification on here, and they called them Henrican forts. Now, normally, um, the local lords of the area would build their own defences to protect themselves from any invasions. I think it was the Spanish then, or it could be the Dutch actually, I'm not sure. And uh, the Enrican ones was because uh, they were commissioned by Henry VIII himself. So Henry used his own money to build uh, a fort previous to what you see now. The Henry VIII one was built from stone and brick from the St Mary's um, Church. Uh, now, the only thing I can think of, the reason why he's done that, uh, is because it must have been Catholic, because um, if you know or know not, um, Henry VIII was a Protestant. Apparently there's nothing left of the Henry VIII uh, forts, so um, we can't really have a look at it. Now, the forts are open today, so all I can do is just show over the walls of what was here. In 1888, wrong, in 1889-90, uh, the East Tilbury Battery was built. Uh, completely different this one behind us. This was, um, that one was a low profile one. And it built what they call the Twydall system, or the Twydall fortifications. And what that is, is it's um, a series of, it, basically where the land starts before the fort, there's a, a ditch with a very high wall so troops could struggle to get over it. If they got over it, then there's a quite a steep gradient, something like one in 10, uh, up to a parapet. And behind the parapet is a, another floor with a gun on it, and then the fort after that. Uh, now the guns had uh, were, were a thing called disappearing, car sorry, disappearing carriages. What that meant were, um, the guns, once they were loaded, could be lifted up, right, shot at the target and then taken back down out of wear, out of harm, reloaded and lifted back up. In the East Tilbury Battery they had two 10 inch guns and four 6 inch guns. Unfortunately it was um, discontinued before the First World War so it had no significant or anything to do with the First or Second World War. The place is abandoned now and it's completely overgrown and I think it's on private land otherwise we could go along and have a look at um, this um, Twidal or Twidal system. Colloy's Battery was an important uh, part of the uh, defence of, of uh, London. It's right at the Thames Estuary. Uh, you see it's fortified behind me with all the uh, gun emplacements. They're mainly uh, anti-aircraft emplacements, to be honest with you. Also, across there, there's Cliff and Shawmead Forts. That were, again, from, I think, the Victorian times. And uh, they were also, I think, fortified, or they were made into uh, anti-aircraft batteries, which hopefully we may have a look at later on if I can get across there. Uh, now, this place was bombed quite regularly, it was Stuka dived and um, I think incendiary bombs were actually um, onto this, uh, attacking this place and no doubt across there as well. reason that is because the Luftwaffe would come along the Thames estuary and he would use it as a guide to get to London. This structure is a mine control um, tower, very similar to the one at uh, Burnham Crouch, just a smaller version really. You can see the um, embrasures or loopholes. You see the watch out, the thing there, uh, where they can look out over. That would probably have all been cleared up anyway, and they'd be able to see that back in the 40s. And no doubt, uh, it's either an anti aircraft gun on top, or it could be a searchlight, actually. I like the loopholes there, just to just case any enemy decides to come around the back. And looks as though we can actually go inside it and we'll have a look in a minute. Oh, no, we can't, unfortunately. I can't blame them really, it's probably vandalism more than anything else, but we can have a look through the window.
yeah this structure was to um, control a, um, a minefield that would be stretching across this estuary to stop any e-boats any quick um, schnell boats but well, e-boats which are German and any possible submarines which deep enough and definitely ships uh, so they keep a lookout to see what the um, if there was anything coming along and uh, they would have had some kind of a, um, a, a diagram of a series of German and British ships silhouetted just to make sure they didn't blow their own ship off especially if they're going at night and they're putting the, the search lights on and they can see just an outskirt of an outline of a, of a ship um, you just don't want to blow your own ships up <laughs> so that's um, one of the uses of this type of tower now we're going to walk down and have a look at uh, another bit of a structure that belonged to this tower um, and I'll explain when I get a bit closer this little concrete bunker in front of me is just in front of the mine control tower um, it had a series of electrical cabling and switchboard uh, switch gear and stuff like that and it was to operate the uh, minefield in the actual Thames estuary which is just at front there over this little mound it's absolutely pouring down here so I've got the photo back of me this also was a, a, another significant um, part of the fort that was going to be used or what it would be used for and it was a degaussing system now degaussing system is really to try and demagnetize the ships that um, uh, that um, so in other words they don't come in contact with any magnetic mines the Germans would lay now it was done at Tilbury Docks which is further down uh, along the Thames estuary and what they would do would they would lay a series of cables under the seabed or on the seabed from the fort itself and they would monitor the ships going over they would go over first or they come back I should say from being degaussed or demagnetized and if they found that they were still magnetic they would be sent back to Tilbury docks and they would get to more degaussing so in other words there's less chance of them attracting German mines um, apparently this could be um, a place where they either stored some ammo for the um, mine control tower which would only be small arms ammo anyway it would only be machine gun or rifle or it could be a place where they uh, actually inspect the electrical system maybe the degaussing could have come from here there's a tower there I think it's a tower let's have a look yeah it's like a bit of a blast wall more than anything else with some loopholes in it this moat would have been built either the Enrican or the Henry the Eighth days who obviously if the uh, if, uh, the, um, the invading party came ashore then uh, they would struggle to get across that as well now it's a foot I'm walking on a path here but no doubt the fort would have gone completely round the actual sorry the um, the moat would have gone completely round the fort itself this moat now is only used for uh, sailboats like this and um, I think they actually go crabbing, they don't go fishing now I've had a quick look at the um, the fort and um, especially the bits that uh, belong to the Second World War let's go and have a look at another unique structure further down here I know it's difficult to see at the moment because all that grass is overgrown. I mean, probably been like that for the past 70 odd years. Uh, the River Thames is just in front of us, and this little area here is more than likely um, a watchtower as such. It's a low watchtower to keep the cells out of the way in case any ships, any enemy ships come past, come past and uh, there's less chance of seeing them. This building here is quite possibly probably some kind of crew quarters. That's the seafront, you can't see anything there at all. It's completely blocked off. There's two there's two windows here and there's a door. Um, there's a hole behind where the camera is. It may have had a toilet there, down into some kind of sewer works. But this is quite popular where the crew would sit when they've got nothing else to do, or they're off duty.
You can see the rebarring there where it's all fallen apart after 70 years, 80 years, a big massive crack, so no doubt probably the foundations have moved. Either that or when it was bombed, um, when the Luftwaffe were coming over bombing London, then they might, that might have caused it as well. This is just below the um, the pillboxes. Um, this is all it is. I've got to think it's a storage area. It's more than I like to store the ammo more than anything else and just keep it out of um, harm's way. A series of nuts and bolts that are called a hold fast. It was to hold, I think, an anti aircraft gun, um, either 3.7 inch or a 4.5 inch. The anti aircraft gun, uh, the 3.7 inch, would reach something like 41,100 feet in the air. And the 4.5 inch would reach something like 44,000 feet. Just to the side of the hole fast where the gun would have been. Uh, it looks like a storage area, a small storage area. There are both sides actually. Just below the two um, uh, pillboxes, there's a couple of more um, recessed areas. More than likely again for um, putting anti-aircraft shells in again, they make very quickly. That looks like some kind of ramp. If it is, it could have been an artillery piece coming up here, making it a bit more stable than actually sit it on the um, on the grass itself. I have no information on it. I'm only hazarding a guess. What you see behind me is a um, a radar tower, uh, disguised as a water tower, so the Germans uh, was less likely chance of bombing it. It had a it had a, a an apparatus in it called a two eight seven, which was a radar. Uh, I think it was um, in its early stages there'd been a radar and um, um, the idea of this radar in here was a low level radar in other words you could detect shipping and possibly submarines that were coming up the estuary whether it was our ships or whatever it may have been and the idea would be would, do, um, would be if they did saw an enemy ship they could actually get its range and its distance and no doubt relay it to the uh, gunnery to fire on it if that was the case um, inside the bottom section here, this is where the uh, people, the soldiers would live. There were Marines actually, it was Royal Navy to control this place. The Royal Navy developed the actual 287 as well. And um, inside here would have been living quarters, um, toilets, um, a canteen, sleeping area. Also, there was an engine I think as well which powered the actual radar above it. The, in the top section where you can get up by a ladder, or they did in them days, um, the there would be obviously infamous uh, stuff inside there that would control the uh, radar some kind of um, parabolic um, aerial they could they could adjust it by I think electrical means and they could find the best how to hone in on a ship to try and identify it as best as possible and obviously do the appropriate action uh, whatever it may have been the uh, wreckage over there uh, apparently is from the first world war so uh, this section here would have more than likely had um, some kind of heavy gun in case of any shipping, any German shipping coming up here. Or as again, I don't know how deep the water is, submarines maybe. It could also possibly be for anti-aircraft because um, aircraft were bombing England in the First World War, especially the Zeppelins, so that, that's the airships. So it's possible that it could be um, part of that as well. Thanks for watching and hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the uh, the history of uh, this area and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. See you again.